We've got some USDA prime beef ribs. We're gonna give them a great seasoning. Then we're gonna get them out to the grill, smoke them up, and have some delicious beef for dinner. Yeah, I've got two really nice looking USDA prime beef ribs right here. Racks of ribs. First thing I wanna do is I'm going to remove the membrane. I don't always do that with beef ribs, but sometimes I want to. Just like in pork ribs, you kind of like lift up a corner. Paper towel really helps to hold on to this. And just work your way across, take your time. Now I do want to get a little bit of a binder on here and all I'm using is this balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's. I really like the way this works as a binder on beef. Now for rubs today, I'm actually using two. I'm gonna do a light layer of jalapeno salt from Simon Barbecue and then beef and brisket rub from Sharp's Gourmet Barbecue. So just a little shake of this jalapeno salt. And I'm just doing the jalapeno salt on the top and bottom, not on the sides. Again, just a light coating of the jalapeno salt. And these ribs are gonna go in the refrigerator overnight. We're gonna be smoking them up tomorrow. I'm happy with that. These are going in the refrigerator, like I said, and tomorrow I will see you out at the grill. Which grill? Just have to wait and see. All right, our beef ribs have been soaking in that flavor overnight. The Hunsaker Vortex Smoker is fired up. My target temp today is 250 degrees. This smoker really likes 275, so I may have to play with the vents a little bit. I've got a water pan in there, as you saw, and in the charcoal buried in there, I have a couple chunks of white oak. So let's go ahead and get our beef ribs on. What do you know, they fit. All right, we're gonna get the lid closed and we're gonna let these go for an hour, then we'll come back and check them, see if we need to spritz. I'm guessing we will probably need a spritz. All right, we're at the one hour mark. The temperature on the Hunsaker is holding really steady right around 250. I did have to adjust those vents a bit, but that's what you gotta do. So let's go ahead and check our beef ribs, see how they're doing, probably give them a spritz. Coming along nicely. I don't know if you can see down here, but we already have some nice pullback from the bones. For me at least, beef ribs tend to have more pullback from the bone earlier than say pork ribs. But let's go ahead and give these a spritz with some plain water. We're gonna close this up. Let these keep going, we'll come back in another hour and check it. My plan is to wrap these in butcher paper when they reach sort of the color and texture that I want. And then it takes another couple hours in the butcher paper until they're tender. I don't temp ribs like this. I really wanna go for tenderness. That's what I do. I probe for tenderness. So let's close up the Hunsaker and let these keep smoking. See you back here in about an hour. All right, we are at the two hour mark. Let's go ahead and take a look at our beef ribs. Oh, wow, look at those. Wanna do a little tenderness check here, just see how we're coming along. 
little bit of resistance there. So I'm gonna give these a quick spritz and we're gonna let them go for another hour and I'm pretty sure about that point, we're gonna wrap them. See you back here in about an hour. All right, we are at the three hour mark. Let's go ahead, take a look at our ribs and I'm 99.9% .9 sure we're gonna wrap them. Oh wow, look at those. All right, we're gonna get that closed up and we'll come back in two hours and check them for tenderness. All right, we've been going a total of five hours, three hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped. Let's check for tenderness. Usually about this time is when I find beef ribs to be done, but if they're not, we'll let them go a little longer. So this is the bigger rack right here. So I'm gonna try and go in between the bones here, see how we're doing. That was a bone, but it felt very tender. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Took a few good pokes not to hit bone, but we are tender. These are gonna go inside. They're gonna rest for 30 minutes. Then we will open them up and cut in. Well, here we go, our beef ribs. Now these turned out great. And one question that I always get is, but I don't have that cooker. I don't have a drum, I don't have an offset. When you're making just about anything, there are three elements to it. There's time, there's temperature, and tenderness. Beef ribs, you are going for tenderness. Some people cook it to a temperature of like 200 degrees or so. That's fine if it works for you. I prefer to do it to tenderness. So as long as you have a cooker that you can have for an amount of time and keep a temperature, all you need to do is get these to tenderness. You could do these on a Weber kettle, you could do it on a pellet grill, a Weber Smoky Mountain, anything you got. I just love my Hunsaker though, that's a great cooker. Bark turned out great. I think it's time to cut in. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is still nice and hot. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do here is I like to cut beef ribs off the bone. And they're just gonna fall off the bone anyway. So this piece right here, I'm gonna cut for tasting. Oh, look at that. This is super juicy in there. Now you notice there's not a super big smoke ring because there's a nice fat layer right here. That prevents those combustion gases from interacting with the proteins there. That's just the way smoke rings are formed, but there's a lot of moisture in here and that's what I'm really happy about. So now let's have a taste. That is terrific. The smoke flavor, the rub, little bit of heat from that jalapeno salt, not much. You could leave that off and you don't even have to use that rub. You could use any rub you want. This is about making ribs your way, the way you like them. Just taking a nice rack of beef ribs like this, giving them the seasoning you want, and then the time and the temperature to get to tenderness. And this worked perfectly today.